Um, this is your Libertarian Crusaders podcast episode show number 27. And today we're going to talk about the coronavirus because it's here in Virginia now. There's already been a confirmed case in D.C. Uh, right when it happened in D.C., I got notified that it's here in Virginia. The D.C. was a man in, uh, in his 50s who started exhibiting symptoms in late February. He was admitted into a D.C. hospital March 5th. And then they said that he tested positive this uh, Saturday afternoon for the coronavirus. Uh, this man is interesting because he has no international history of uh, no history of traveling internationally. Community so. spread. Right. I'm an expert now in, that, in terms like that. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's interesting. So this person, this kind of matches though. Uh, you had the what CPAC over the weekend. There was one person that came out infected. And he's in a crowd of people. So, of course, people think, well, you know, it's just too infected, but it takes some time have they seen for this to kind of show symptoms uh, up to three weeks before you even know you have the coronavirus. But germaphobes, right? Yeah. And I yeah. don't even know why we're meeting together here. We might breathe on each other. <laughs> we might spread it. They're saying like groups of 10 or more uh, totally, you know, should not happen. Like some of these countries are talking about banning groups of a certain number or more and the numbers are getting increasingly draconian so right i think in italy um so i think that i always look at europe as our canary and the coal mine whatever happens in europe can happen here the immigration can happen here um the open borders can happen here and you saw we look at the coronavirus right now and people say well is this in china is this over there it's in italy now it's in a western country and northern region of italy and now they've had to Get ready to open up schools for vets. They're on the close on the brink of like having no room available for people to go in. And like, while we're going to go over arguments, we're going to go over uh, uh, the points that people make. It's not uh, something to take serious. It's not something uh, to be precautious of. Um, but even still, even that, when it gets to the point where even if it, not a lot of people are dying, it does draw a lot of resources away from people who need admittance to hospitals. And those beds and respiratory systems are kind of all backlogged and taken. Well, there's going to be a ripple effect that happens from it regardless. If nothing else, if the media just hypes something up to a point where people are going out and taking action, this it's, it's just what happens in the world. We're going to see repercussions from this. You know, it's obvious. Like at one of my jobs, I was near the checkout and everybody was just coming up buying all the hand sanitizer that they could. And... uh before long, before lunch, they had ran out. So then there was 100 people coming to the register saying, do you have any hand sanitizer? And they're like, nope, nobody does. Isn't that something you could easily make at home, though? I don't yeah, know. rubbing alcohol and aloe. Aloe vera. I right. guess. So you, I bet you all the rubbing alcohol was still in that aisle. Right. You know, but, and, and all the bleach was probably still there and all, you know, all the cleaning solutions. But I'll people, say something, though, really quickly. I was a big fan of... Um, uh, rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizer, until our friend Justin Walsh has something to say about that. And he says that parabens and uh, triclosans and hand sanitizers are great if you want to suppress their sperm count and chemically castrate your children, grow man tits, and negate some of your workout gains. If that's not your goal, I'd stay away from them. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I find that going straight for the nuclear option is probably not the best plan of attack, right? Like, uh, just maintain a general cleanliness. Make sure you bathe regularly. You know, I don't even necessarily, you know, scrub to the point where, you know, I don't get in the super hot shower and bleach myself whenever I take a shower. Cause we don't do that. Okay. Got yeah, it. yeah. Like, so, I don't know. I feel you? like, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you peel that first layer of skin off, it makes you a bit vulnerable almost. Cause you know, you build up that, when the sun beats down on you and stuff like that, you uh, desensitize yourself. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You build a resistance, if you will. So if you <clears throat> go to nuke all the germs all the time, then, well, if the bad germs outcompete the good germs the next time around, that's a, a petri dish for bad, bad things to start taking over. Yeah, the, Adam Carolla has a funny bit about this concept, which is uh, he knocks washing your hair with shampoo virtually every time you know you get in the shower he like says this isn't this isn't really a good thing to do like what you're doing is you're washing out all the natural oils that appear in your 
scalp and hair and then reapplying some conditioner, which is supposed to mimic those same oils, which it, so you're just like, you'd be better off just doing, you know, maybe washing your hair like once a week with shampoo or something rather than, uh, uh, but it's just a funny, it's like your body does something naturally and it's meant to do it that way. And it's been doing it for tens of thousands of years. And then people come up with, no, actually I need to totally, uh, you know, destroy all every germ in, within a hundred foot radius of me. <laughs> all right. And this kind of touches down into maybe why these sort of things come out seasonally, right? Because uh, there's some kind of interesting things that occurs when uh, not just the flu, like people, why do people get the flu during uh, winter time? Or is that a very common thing? You get the cold and all that stuff because you find a lot of people are indoors and not outdoors. Cooped up. You don't have uh, the sun beaming down on you. You're not getting all that vitamin D. And certain temperatures when it's over 100 degrees, that kills most germs and bacteria after a while. Humidity, right? right. Uh, so you find then may, maybe this, when we come out of winter, this might die down. This That'll help uh, lessen the spread and severity of it when we go into spring. Um, but yeah, so they find temperatures um, because uh, people are less likely to go outside. But also you also have uh, winters, a seasonal occasion of, of camaraderie and family getting together and a lot of traveling. So you have those high impact groups that we're trying to uh, not be a part of right now because of the coronavirus spread. And you have a lot of that goes on, especially during winter. Yeah, there's there's um, a lot. There's I think there's a good case to be made, and especially when you look at where the virus appears to be most prominent right now, and which countries are having the easiest go of it. Like Singapore has a has a is very close to China, but has a more moderate like climate right this time of year. Mm -hmm. And you know the virus has appeared in like Morocco and maybe some closer to the equator countries. And I don't think it's been as big of an issue for them, but yeah, it, it really depends on where it is and and which area is starting to experience their autumn and, mm. and winter in the in the southern hemisphere too. So, well, if we look at what parts the virus focuses on, when it hurts you, it's a it's a respiratory thing that hurts you. And in China, they have a notoriously bad pollution problem, everything like this. So these people aren't walking around with healthy respiratory systems and stuff like that on average. You know, unfortunately, in the U.S., there's a lot of people we have healthy air and everything like that for the most part. But then people don't personally take care of themselves. And so it could right. be a problem in that way that people don't do the proper actions of taking care of themselves. And their then, rivers are so polluted, incredibly dirty. Right. And so if you're going to look for new life forms, like forget the planets, <laughs> go there, study this new stuff coming out there all the time. <laughs> Mutations could be. You know, Spider-Man could be hanging out. Right. They do say right now recently that they that the people who have had them um, and are have gone through their own, um, I guess, quarantine moment or it's going away for them. But, you know, it's China. I can't trust like any product from China or any numbers from China. Right. And but at the same time, I like, touching what you're saying about like some of these other countries are around like uh, the warm part of the equator. Right. Um, you have places like India that hasn't really said so much about it, but at the same time, they don't really particularly have like the hospitals or I think right. for people to go there and check on that. Well, it's that meme of the, you know, the black guy who's like pointing to his head and like, you can't have coronavirus if you don't test for it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, that's the, the United States solution to this. It seems like is like, Hey, we're not going to test. And uh, all of that, all of those arguments that you always hear about, what would we do Without a government, you know, if there were a pandemic, well, well you're looking at it. The government's not doing anything. So right. we're all in this on our own, it sounds like. And uh, they're not testing for it. And I don't care if they did. You know, it wouldn't make any difference. Right. Hong Kong has done a really good response to a lot of this because they, most of it is business central control for those kind of particular district regions. And they say, uh, yeah, um, don't come to work. Uh, remote work from home. And they've done a good job. Uh maintaining that themselves and without like a uh, clamp down, like right now in Italy, <clears throat> what you have is coming from the sources here says that there's going to be a quarantine of like the entire Northern region It's going to be enforced on Sunday and last until April 3rd. And they'll stop anyone from entering and exiting the most affected areas. And while moving inside will only be allowed for non deferred business or health reasons. So skiing, public events, religious ceremonies, these things will be suspended. Schools, museums, swimming pools, and theaters will be closed. Bars and restaurants. This is where, like, uh, 
personal space comes in. They said bars and restaurants will have to make sure patrons keep at least a meter apart or they'll be shut down. Wow. And violating any of this stuff gives you a uh, three months uh, jail time. Wow. So how, how far religious is the meter? Services. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can shut down, you know, religious service. How dare right. you guys try to pull together as a community and solve the problem? We're going to force you to be isolated. And if you're not, then we're going to lock you in a cage later. All right. See, they should have closed their borders a long time ago. I haven't heard much of Russia saying, uh, having experienced much of anything being close to China. Well, Italy has been hit exceptionally hard by this thing. And so is Iran. And I'm, and I'm, I've heard discussions about whether it's, there's two strains of this thing. There's the easier strain, like the L strain, and then the S strain, which is supposed to be worse. But um, I, you know, I don't know that for sure. But it's uh, I heard that from this peak prosperity guy on YouTube, Chris Mortensen. But it sounds like I mean they've had way more deaths compared to the number of in Italy compared to the number of total cases that they've reported in Italy. Yeah, yeah, it's like two hundred something right now. So they're that's why I think they're going for those draconian measures. And I mean they they might work. But at what cost, you know, and mm -hmm. um, and also, I mean, this this brings back the discussion about open borders and how great of an idea is that really when considered uh, when you think, OK, all you if you all you have to do is close your borders and you can prevent a lot of this, then a lot of spread, then this really f would force some people to might question that, you know, a little bit. Right. more. So. They're saying that uh, Russia's close borders is a big uh, proponent of helping towards preventing that. They had two people going into uh, Russia through a Chinese uh, residence, and they quarantined them, and then they sent them back after it went away. And that's really so far what I've come across any kind of uh, news from Russia. So, yeah, not letting uh, strangers trespass into, like, uh, I don't know, a country of your people who are infected, like you see the borders right now in Greece and Turkey. Uh, who knows what they have? Right. But yeah, let them go through, walk through their country and just right throughout the rest of Europe. Um, I know this isn't a borders openness thing, but it does touch upon that. But I think it's also another way to uh, look upon um, other other consequences that people don't think about in terms of just letting mass migration people come through um, and spreading. That. Like you would think that uh, closed borders would be the best argument for people who are pro vaxxers Right. Um, you want to see what they have. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> You want to check their, check their medical record, right? Have you had these vaccines? If you don't, well, you know, they always say like unvaccinated kids will kill everybody, right? So what about these people who are unvaccinated? <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, I think that this could be like kind of a pale horse sort of situation for forced vaccines and, you know, a clamp, a totalitarian clamp down in a lot of ways. It's this invisible menace that's coming at everybody. You know, you never know who might have the virus. Uh, it's the meme that's out there right now. I've, I've heard people talking about it, just like normies. So I'm pretty interested to ride this out, see what happens. I would say that the memes making fun of Asians having it have died down now that there's Westerners having it. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yep. I have noticed a drop in those memes. <laughs> they were saying like, stuff, like they were saying like these memes are like very uh, racist, making fun of Asians having it. Um, but then like now in the Western part, I was like, all right, those kind of memes have died down. But I will say, uh, pepper memes have been really more accepting. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, I think the boogaloo paved the way for people to stop uh, looking bad at preppers or making fun of them, um, especially when you had like 50,000 people come here in Richmond. <laughs> and now, of course, maybe preparation is a good thing, right? Um, even if this is this doesn't blow up to wild proportions, it is good to still have, you know, uh, water just in case, right? Or canned goods uh, right. just in case, um, to just to be prepared for everything. And that's a good mentality for everyone to have to have that self uh, sustenance of being able to take care of yourself in the event of uh, government can take care of you. Yeah, oh. there's a guy I followed named John John Wesley Rawls, and he uh, talks. He he has a little show, and he talks about this, and he says, you know, if you're a prepper like me, you you already have a bunch of hand sanitizer. You had it six months ago. You know, you had all this stuff, and you think that's that's a powerful statement. Like it, it's not. It wasn't hard to do, and it wasn't expensive. And now you're not competing with anybody for all this stuff, you know? Right. I didn't have to run down anyone with my car <laughs> to get this last one. This was the last one on the shelves. I was like, when I found out the Virginia one, I'm like, it has some stuff already. But I was like, let me go check. I'm already here in the store. And I was like, wow, there really is only one left. Right. Yeah. I had a Kroger. And mm -hmm. I mean, these, uh, the Lysol one is pretty good. It kills a majority of a lot of. 
bacteria and viruses. It's got a whole list in here that disinfects even the influenza virus uh, from uh, from everything. Human coronavirus. I think that, but yeah, yeah we're going to get, we're we're gonna get a whole new thread of marketing that's going to a new set of packaging on all of the all of the disinfectant things. So if you have stock in like printer ink and stuff like that to so print out this stuff, this is a good investment. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm just glad that we already have stuff that can like kill it. At least at the very least, I know this is a very hygienic country, more so than many other countries. Like you look at India, they, they throw a cow dung at each other. They think that's a fun thing to do for festivals. <laughs> Um, and some of them say like drinking cow urine is uh, medicinal, right? It's like, all right. Uh, but we're a very hygienic country. There are some stats that say that Americans don't wash their hands as long as often as they should. And I think this kind of goes down, let's go down the path what we could do. So, so let's say in the scenario that this is a real thing, uh, what can we do to prevent the coronavirus, right? Um, one would be wiping down uh, regularly, like your workspace, if you have computers, if you're working at a uh, sheets, just wiping down your the counters, wearing gloves. A, a lot of the stuff goes through money. The toll booth attendants. So a long time ago, they, they do drug testing, right, for these toll, toll booth attendants, and they found like they're failing all the time, and they're like they're not even doing any drugs. Like why are they testing positive oh. for? Because they're handling the money. Oh. <laughs> That's hilarious, right? So what? How much cocaine is on every, like every square inch of uh, dollars or something? It's like. <laughs> Right. It's so like it's in there, absorbs into the Just think of the people that stick that up their nose to uh, inhale stuff. Like, <laughs> right, they must right. have an amazing immune system. Right. I mean, and we have, yeah, we have Easy Pass these days. So there's just no touching of anything. You just drive right <laughs> through the toll booth. Yeah, so, right. I mean, there's that. Yeah. So wear gloves. You can wear gloves if you work as sheets to make sandwiches. Wear gloves if you're uh, handling money. Right. There's no need to do that. Stop. I mean, do stuff for yourself. Stop, you know being lazy right i saw a guy in, your immune system yeah. yeah all right i saw a guy in gym already wearing a mask a cool one a black <laughs> one here going over here headphones on he looked like a scorpion or something right. but he looked he looked, well, looked at sometimes they wear those that the air restriction right. mask right where <laughs> they limit your oxygen intake so you're like uh it boosts your cardio uh the, i would say yes but this is the first time i've seen this guy wear it i've okay. seen it before Right. So it can't be too much of a coincidence. <laughs> Why does he wear the mask? <laughs> <laughs> if I take that off, will you die? <laughs> <laughs> be extremely painful. <laughs> <laughs> See what a pain now. Yep. <laughs> right. He was way ahead of his time. Right. You know. uh, so a friend of ours, uh, Nash Yielding, put together this website called beattheCoronavirus.com. Uh, for those listening, I'll put it in the description link. And yeah, he has a lot of really good things that you could do to to beat it. And when we don't be as, uh, I guess, courteous and shaking hands right now, right? Uh, don't even do the Obama bump, right? Uh, or the elbow chicken thing. You can just do high or go back to Eastern culture. Straight or to a fist about, fight, right? Just <laughs> heard the, the foot bump. Oh, well, yeah, I that's like that, one. right? Yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's uh, that's. That's the easiest way for those these contagions to be passed on to other people. Yeah. Uh, another one would be like uh, door handles. You know, a lot of people clean their house, but forget to clean door handles. They places that people touch all the oh, time. Yeah. Um, I don't even touch door handles. I, I try to use my elbow to touch that where I touch a part of the door that's like <laughs> up here, a wet well away from where people. Um, I do that regularly too. So I never touch door handles at any store. I'll grab somewhere higher up. Or lower up, yeah. Then the common area where people can't grab and open up doors, um, or like after I wash my hands in the bathroom, also I'll get a paper towel, open it, throw it in the trash, and get out. I've seen some cool bathroom doors that have this foot mechanism where you just pull it out with your foot. It's yep. like genius. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good one. Don't use the hand blow dryers. The blow dryers so that you put your hand there because that's blasting bacteria in your face. Because the air has got to suck up from somewhere. And you don't have anything to grab the, the door handle with when you're walking out. You know, you don't have well, a lot of places. They don't even have paper towels. towels anymore. And it's only that. Right. right. So you just yeah. do the sleeve thing, you know, yeah. if you have to. Um, I've done it for years. I've never been sick. I haven't had the flu. Um, I've had a pre I pretended once when I was in the military to be sick so I could get out of work. Worst mistake because they gave me like this. So you have to go. And. They gave me this thing that just made your tongue really numb in case you have food poisoning, because that's what I was saying. And I was like, fuck, I wish I never did this. But uh, yeah, being a good, good as a fit as a bull, I think working out is a good thing for a lot of people. Builds up your immune system. Um, but yeah, 
greeting people without touching them, I think is a good thing these days. So how are the politicians this year going to be able to greet all of their supporters? Oh yeah, how's Joe hands? Biden gonna sniff all the babies? <laughs> right, yeah, that, you definitely don't wanna get close to that sniffer. Yeah. All wow. of these candidates are old guys too. Right. With, with wow. pre-existing health conditions. I'm okay with this. Uh, <laughs> some, are, some Iranian politicians already re- have uh, gotten infected. I think one just died recently. Mm-hmm. You know something that surprised me? Copper foil, copper in itself, the, uh, the atoms, the ionization of, of copper itself so, kills a majority of all bacteria and viruses upon contact. There's something about it that just ruptures their cell membrane and everything about it. And once they come into contact, it just destroys all of it. And they're still, this is something they found out recently, like maybe 10 years ago. And they're still trying to understand like how exactly does it work, but, but it works. Uh, so you can take some copper foil, put it on your doorknobs, on your telephone, on um, things that people normally are, touch all the time. Uh, you can become Copper Man, right? Goofy cousin of Iron Man is like, yep, <laughs> yep clunk your way into yeah. action. Resistant to bacteria. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's my superpower. <laughs> Something that surprised me that they've made is copper infused linen. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's oh, sheets. Put a copper thread. Right. There's like, uh, there's copper in it. And it's infused with the linen and the sheets. And it's very soft, durable, just like a regular sheet. But uh, you can sleep with it, right? I, I draw a question, a concern over it, because too much copper is not good for you. Even So if it's bad for the viruses, being encased in copper all the time, I don't think it's good for you. Right. 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 I think that gets the people get that green mark on their hand, and they put those wrists on for a long time, I imagine. Oh. Hmm. Right. Maybe there's something to that. Because they always say, like, wearing copper is good for your health. You ever come across that weird stuff? Oh, malls? there's there's all sorts of yeah. My dad has always wore a copper bracelet. Yeah, all right. People claim it like um, the, what is that? It, it, like there's these shorts with copper in it, and it's supposedly people claim, well, it, it hurts, it keeps my uh, aches and pains. You know, it makes them go away or something. Yeah, like that. but and people will make uh, sinks out of copper. Right. Um, they're like exceptionally difficult to clean and to keep right. clean or. They're not difficult to keep clean, but you don't want to use any uh, of the normal stuff you would use, like Comet. It'll tarnish very mm-hmm. easily. Tarnish, yeah. yeah. So. Copper cups are here are, are good to have. Um, mm-hmm. Easily just kind of disinfects itself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, copper sheets. So copper, thin copper tapes are available. Um, I can't imagine. Uh, I was thinking of uh, Copper Man and like his his name nemesis are like uh, these hobos going around trying to get copper scraps. Like, get off of me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> crackheads. There's a, trying there's, to a, <laughs> there's a robbery I'm trying to get to. <laughs> Copper's great for uh, grounding wire too. It's on a totally random tangent. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's very conductive. Right. So. Well, here it's good for. Someone was mentioning it's good for keeping slugs away from your garden. It's somehow we create like this copper. I don't know how they would do it, but a lining or something, and slugs will just not go in there and eat up your the fruits repelled. and vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Of course, here are the normal ones, right? Disinfect your laundry, disinfect your toilet, disinfect your electronics. Um, you know, these are things that people should do on a weekly or biweekly basis. Um, people forget to like wash, your, like wait till a whole month to wash your sheets, but do that regularly. Um, and they find interestingly, like, so we have all these things to prevent, right? Aside from gloves and all this stuff. But um, here's an interesting study from like uh, how big role environmental transmissions of this. So you look at hospital places that were uh, testing what it was like to have the coronavirus when a patient came in there. And yeah, tested everywhere, right? And then when they did a, a deep clean, right? Um, it was all gone, right? So nothing was left behind. Uh, even the health co-workers that were there in this hospital, uh, none of them has been affected at all with it. So like proper cleanliness, proper uh, washing your hands is a big one. A lot of people, don't think that uh, think that you just do a couple of second rinse and you're good to go. But yeah, they've they've shown photographs what it looks like with a six second second rinse. It's like you still have bacteria all over your hand. You need a good twenty seconds to kind of go through that, and it's gone, right? But I'm not saying like go to the point where like like John Travolta, like uh, where I hear <laughs> boy in a bubble, right? Boy in a bubble sort of mode. But I think maybe right now. I think it's fine for the next two, three months. Not to live a lifestyle, living like a boy in the bubble, but at least until it dies down and do our part and not have it to uh, be like Hong Kong. Have you seen what, like those videos of what's it like at night in Hong Kong? Mm-hmm. No one's out in the streets. 
So you have these huge buildings, and of course, everyone has their uh, balcony, and people are like yelling and uh, screaming. Is that Hong Kong or Hong is that Kong. Wuhan? Oh, I heard Wuh- this was Hong Kong. Oh, okay. Maybe, I, I mean, I saw I'm sure. this video, I think. I, I think it might have been in Wuhan. Or, maybe Wuhan? Yeah. Okay. But, or so maybe it's Wuhan. Yeah. But it, it, I can't imagine it being like that. It's right? still crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like ghosts, ghouls howling in the wind, picking up and just carrying all over the city. Um, a good question to be had is what if, so say if it comes here to Richmond, a lot of cases, Richmond's under quarantine. Um, do you think people here in Richmond would follow that? What would that look like? Hmm. I have no idea. Uh, that's what I'm interested to see. Cause I think that, uh, the virus is more getting hyped up by the media cause they're lashing out, trying to keep their viewers and fear is what keeps people tuned in and everything like that. If you sit around and talk about it and like, look at the realistic scenario it's not as big of a thing as like what they're playing it up to be so uh it's mostly the people that are uh, substantially affected are caught in like old folks homes and that's like a petri dish and they're the ones that have a high likelihood of being affected by respiratory illnesses anyway you know they're not in they're not physically fit. They don't get to go out in nature as much. They don't get to grow as many gardens and stuff like that. The, the things that would help you build a resistance to it, they don't get to do. And they're isolated and insulated from their families. They don't get to meet up and get all this information. They're not tuned into the internet and stuff like that like we are. So they're mm. going to suffer the most, I feel like. Are you saying that even... I mean, I've, you've been to grandmother's houses before. They have the sheets. Everything's kind of sanitized, you know. <laughs> you think covered they're, in plastic. <laughs> right, everything's covered in plastic. You think they're more prepared <laughs> than anyone else. <laughs> I, I think that some older people probably have lived through certain events and and, and it's uh, never been a th- viruses <laughs> that have been worse or, you know, or nearly as bad. I mean, grow, maybe when they were growing up, they had, you know, more serious cases of measles or whatever. But, uh, I, I think also there's just the simple fact that we have to accept as a society that people who are old are designed, are, are less capable of handling things like this. And that's just nature's way of clearing out the older stock and bringing in the newer stock. It's just, it's a sad fact of life, but that is. It doesn't necessarily it, have to be physical age either, though. Like you could <clears throat> age your body prematurely by doing detrimental a lo- things. A lot of these right. old people have stopped working out like in their thirties. And that's why they're like that. Um, there's that video of like grandma fitness. I forget. I don't right, know what her yeah. name is. And she started working out five years ago. She's like a, fucking, <laughs> more she's a tank. I don't want to curse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah. So, I mean, people like sometimes when they reach 50, they're like time to let go. Right. It's like, why? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You see older people who have continued to work every day and they're fit as fit as a fiddle. So, right. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't have to just because they're old, but it just tends to happen because most of them just kind of give up and think, well, I could just let it all out now. Um, but so there is a thing that you're mentioning that um, maybe it's not a, a serious case because the media is kind of blowing out of proportion. And I would say that would be true. I would agree with you 100 percent if that's what the media was doing in the very beginning. But they took time. They just kind of ignored it for like a good month before they said something because they felt maybe now they have to. Yeah, but now they've taken it and they've pivoted towards Orange Man Bad. Yeah, of course. So everything is going to be Orange Man Bad. Yeah, that's very true. Um, they'll take any opportunity to do that. But because they didn't take it seriously, and if they're kind of ignoring it, it's usually the opposite that's true. It's like, that means it is a serious thing. There is something happening. Like when they, like an avian flu coming out of China, day one, you know, oh my God, it could come here and you know decimate everybody, right? They're always on it when, when something comes out. This is the first one. They weren't on it and spreading the fear mongering. So it tells me like there's something else that was happening. I don't know what it is, but if they're not covering it, it takes them like a month to do it. That um, it, it, the saying goes like it's the opposite of what the news is saying. It's the opposite is going on. Um, and you have um, so while they say the comparison for like the flu and uh, rates of infection and the deaths, the flu is higher. There's a lot of other catastrophe that, of course. 30,000 people die from car crashes every year on these roads here in the U.S., but uh, the death rate right now is higher than the flu. Um, and so when you find the coronavirus increasing every day, like 50%, like almost to a rate like where it's kind of getting to the point where it's doubling, I think that's something to be um, too finely prepped for at that point. 
Um, well, most... I mean, we are libertarian crusaders. So to be libertarian is kind of like being a prepper. Right. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> like, it yeah. is synonymous. A That's little bit. True. Yeah. 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 The um, World Health Organization said that this is, I think it's around 3% case fatality rate. And I mean, Everybody now is an armchair uh, epidemiologist, right? We all kind of like, <laughs> all of a sudden, everybody knows what a case fatality rate is and everything. But the one, one of the points about this that they don't really know is how many people actually get it. When they, they can say that um, they've tested 100,000 people or they've confirmed 100,000 cases so far or whatever, how many it's gotten up to. And then here's how many deaths. But they can't really say, well, yeah, but there's what we don't know, we don't know. As, as to all of the people who have it are walking around and are just fine and just carriers or whatever. So there's, there's, there's that aspect of it too. And that could reduce that 3% number and Trump kind of got in trouble for saying it, but yeah, it, it, it's 3% based on the numbers we have, but it could be lower than that. And the flu is 0.1%. Mm -hmm. So if as many people get this as get the flu, then a lot more people are going to die. And, right. And that's something that I think, they were trying to tamp down and now it's more or less understood. Right. So there is an interesting area of uh, the range age range group of people that are infected. Um, miraculously children under 10 just don't, don't get it. Um, they're not, uh, they're not dying. I mean, they're the latent spreaders, right? <laughs> Demonize the kids. Typhoid, typhoid Mary, except in child. Oh, form. right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, people are looking for a zombie apocalypse, but it might be where for kids, there's no adult apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world will be their Neverland. Once you reach a certain age, you just die. It'll be a weird Lord of the Flies environment. Uh, good novel <laughs> <laughs> plot for somebody to write about. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, they find yeah mostly it's just older people over 80 years, 80 years, by the time you're 80 over that it's 15%, but. 10 to 19 of age is 0.0018%. Um, so overall, it's 2.8% of men, 1.7% of women. And the people generally who are dying from it, they already have like high blood pressure, heart disease, chronic lung disease, um, other kind of things that are kind of messing with them and doesn't help to compound it with this other a virus. Straw that broke the camel's back, if you will. Right. Um, but yeah, believe it or not, I think uh, apparently keeping your fingernails trimmed is another good one because you keep a lot of that stuff in there. And I say this because I have run into some people who are like, they don't play guitars, but they have like one long fingernail. It's like, I know you're not doing coke, right? What are you, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Cut that, right? <laughs> it's like an eye, so you like, you literally see it. And you don't even need to keep long fingernails if you play guitar. I mean, it's easier, I guess, or they, they claim that the tone is better, but like, you know, it's a small sacrifice to make. Right, <laughs> not spread germs, maybe. But. Uh, one funny thing that's come out of all this in China, you find uh, uh, the COVID nineteen, the coronavirus going out there, uh, it sends a lot of people to be quarantined at home. Right? What are the children going to do? How are they going to get their education? There's an app called Ding Talk, and where the teachers can continue with the indoctrination <laughs> in the classes for these children. And these kids realize that you know what, this is an Apple app. They kick off the market if it's less than one star, uh, like one star or less. For a while. <laughs> they went on there and just reviewed <laughs> and nice. gave it a one star rating and the thousands. <laughs> Amazing. What geniuses. That's real education right there. That's real life education. <laughs> that is awesome. So then we're going to kick this app off and the ding talk is trying to put memes saying, please don't <laughs> give us four stars. You know, we're trying to help you and <laughs> have your classes still here. It's like the people that are subject to the government are going to rebel no matter what. It's like, oh, we're going to find a workaround to, to get rid of you no matter what. Right. It's amazing. <laughs> well, we're coming up in our uh, last five minutes here. Um, so one thing about... Uh, at first sight of being here in Virginia and, and in D.C., I've heard some already being in Colorado. Uh, in New York, there's 4,000 people in quarantine, dozens of cases confirmed, 4,000 people quarantined. Uh, you had that uh, cruise ship that's been quarantined. Princess they, something or other. Both right. of them were princesses. Yeah. They found the person where it came from. So it took only one person to start infecting every, everyone else. There's there. a guy in New Hampshire. 
who uh, they said, okay, you need to self quarantine. And he went right out and went to like a 200 person buffet or meeting or something like that. And a bunch of people in there have it now, or, you know, or it might not have been, he spread it to 200 people. After so they told him to quarantine. where's the, uh, how would a libertarian society deal with the coronavirus? Someone has it. Do you say, well, you know, you can't uh, impede my freedom of movement, right? Uh, what do you do? Well, it would be reparations if you're out infecting people. Well, if they're all dead, there's no one there to collect reparations. Well, somebody probably going to delete you then. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be tough to track down really who caused it, but private borders would be a much more effective way right. to stop people from just saying, okay, I'm... Because this, this is how this is spread, is through all these different countries, all these planes dropping people off, at, at willy nilly, whenever they want, they mm -hmm. can just come into a new land and spread. I mean, it's it's uh that just I don't see how that would be acceptable, right? In a yeah, private right. society, I think it'd be like by then we'd have like smart ways to detect what what kind of uh, illnesses you're carrying or traveling to like a geographic region. It's like from coronavirus, sorry you can't come in, but you know let's help you out, right? Like, <laughs> You can't let like you go in here and spread it out here. We don't yeah. know where you came Just from. walk around that house. Yeah, yeah. Somebody will be there to help you out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Behind the, <laughs> the tool shed. <laughs> Behind the chemical shed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry about it. It's all right. <laughs> but yeah, there, I think there'd be a lot more measures in place than just willy-nilly. Really, really, anyone can walk around anywhere and um, move about and just kind of spread this out there. Um, I will say, because this kind of goes into, like, you can say the pro-vaxxers, anti-vaxxers sort of stuff. But, you know, I think the only people in this country that don't have anything to worry about are the Amish, I'm thinking. I'm putting my money on them. They've survived. I mean, people say, like, uh, without vaccines, they're dead. Like, Amish seem to be doing just fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, like, they seem to be much healthier than the average person anyway, just by virtue of the fact that they don't smoke or drink, which is like two huge factors. There we go. Right? They eat their own food. They work right. every day, physical yeah. labor. Are there obese Amish? <laughs> prefer, right? I doubt it. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. They, they toll the earth. They work. They exercise. Uh, they're out there all the time building up their immunity. And, and yeah, you don't see them clamoring for, you know, like government, solutions. government solution or any of that stuff. Um, I mean, I'm sure it'd be a boring um, sci-fi plot, and then the Amish took over, and, <laughs> and like nothing park refreshing of like uh, crazy adventures, just like building peaceful communities and you know houses and stuff like that, and toil the earth, <laughs> right? Living their life. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a good life, but yeah, uh, you never hear about that. Um, people say, well, that's because they self quarantine. It's like, no, they travel. I see them out on the horse and uh, coach. All the time. They used to come to Nebraska all the time on the train. Like right. they would take, they could take the train all over the place. So sellouts. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're like they're like fixed are, in a certain year, right? Like yeah. they've decided like eighteen seventy eight is the last. That's the technology that we're going to use. The ones that take the trains, those are the Novus Order Amish people. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the five p.m. mass. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think unless there anything else you guys want to add to this. Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's a lot, uh, like regular folks can do to, and my message would be to not to rely on the government to help people. You know, if there's a way that you can, uh, go, if so, you know, somebody who's sick or gets sick and they're older and they need somebody to maybe pick up something from the store, then, you know, offer to help them out. If you have a neighbor or something like that, I think that would be smarter. Just leave the stuff on their front, you know, porch or right. whatever and they'll let them pick it up. But I mean, yeah, that, that would be the only suggestion. I think that's worth doing. Right. Or like if you are infected, put a sign that says don't come near the house and self quarantining. Uh, here's my number. If you want to call me and, you know, help me out as a neighbor or whatnot. Um, that kind of uh, self alert and awareness kind of goes a long way. And yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. Of course, uh, the website again, that uh, people should check out is beat the And Stay liberated. Wash your hands. Um, be careful out there. Grow Get a garden. Get off my property. Grow a garden.